Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I gotta say, I've been loving your comments on the Rat Rod build. This is probably the most hilarious comment section I've received in a long time, because everyone is triggered, and I love it. Not knowing how to weld, then proceeding welding in shorts and flip-flops, using a cutting wheel incorrectly, and calling tubes wires. I love this because with things like this, it brings out the real professionals, and I love professionals. And let me tell you who the real pros are. The ones that start the conversation by saying, as a... Here's an example. As a pro welder of 10 years, I can honestly say this is the worst welding job I've ever seen. Now let's break the anatomy down of a YouTube comment like this one by saying as a, uh, you are already attempting to establish your dominance and credibility over a situation when no one has even challenged you. For example, if someone's having a problem with their kid, I don't jump in and say, as a father of three, I'm qualified to speak on this. <laughs> Anyways, all the professionals out there that start the conversation by saying as a professional this or as a professional that or I've been doing this for X amount of years, all I gotta say is weird flex, but okay. Now we are back with another installment of the electric rat rod build and by now I've shocked and wowed you with my great grinding skills, impressive duct taping skills, and insane fabrication. And I'll have you all know I can do two things really well. One, not take life seriously. And number two, fine woodworking. <laughs> well, sort of. This week's video is brought to you by Norboard, who's creating a really special campaign for the framing industry. There's a shortage of carpenters in this industry, and they literally build everything around you. If you're resourceful, like to work with your hands, and don't want to be stuck in an office job, this is something to check out. Pay is great and rising due to the shortage, and there are also training and apprenticeships available. Some of them are free. Now, skip college debt like Kanye West. Check out becomeaframer.com slash richrebuild to learn more about becoming a framer. And enter to win a Home Depot gift card and an E-Swing Pro Framing Hammer, which I actually have one, and it's a very cool hammer. Thanks again, Norbert, for sponsoring this episode. Now, in today's episode, I'll be taking the wiring I got while browsing my Tesla graveyard. As you can see, it's been colonized by about 617 families of small furry critters, and I couldn't be proud to also help with the housing for various mammals and other woodland creatures. So I finished off my welds with the last few pieces of steel to house the control and wirings, start planning that ridiculous brake pedal, and get rid of the Dodge Caravan seats that are far too reminiscent of high school hookups. Let's get something done. All right, I didn't really record any of that because inside of that car was absolutely disgusting and I had no way to put my camera down, but I got a lot of really good wiring right here that I could use for the rat rod. So this is gonna help me with the, uh, the wiring harness extension that I need to do, but there's definitely a lot of good wire here that I could use. All right, so another bright and early morning on the electric rat. So right here, I'm starting to organize things a little bit more on the rat rod, believe it or not. Now, this wiring harness has been significantly clipped. So I got a, a rid of a lot more stuff and junk I don't need. If you look here, I started adding some electrical tape to make the harness a little bit tighter. A lot of the various colors you were seeing and a lot of the strands that were sticking out kind of looked a little bit unsightly. So I'm just tightening up this harness. This looks a lot better than it did before. And now I'm just kind of working on like a nice wire tuck. I want to get these wires nice and tucked away. So what I came up with was um, there's actually a small channel that I welded in here. So I actually spaced these apart maybe about an inch and a half. And this, since this is pretty sharp steel, this is actually Tesla weather stripping. So I've been cutting the weather stripping and putting it along the lines of the steel. I'm actually gonna put one up here as well. So when I pass the wiring through the bottom, it's kind of like a little wire tuck in a way. I'm gonna be tucking a lot of these wires underneath so you don't see them, so the wires don't get chafed. Because after driving, what's gonna happen is these wires gonna be rubbing back and forth on that steel and probably eventually cause a short. So what I've been doing was I've just been putting the channels there to avoid that. So I'll be putting one at the top as well and uh, that's how I'm gonna pass the wires through, right through there so they don't get chafed. All right, so I did some minor wire management here and there. So this is actually looking a little bit better. A lot of these wires are being tucked in this small gap right here and I'm making sure there's not a lot of pressure. See, there's a lot of breathing room for the wires and there's a lot of room for shifting uh, when the car goes back and forth. But no matter what happens, it's not gonna be rubbing up against any metal. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually drilling small holes in this and the reason for that is 
Um, that's going to be the support for the wiring. So there's going to be a wiring harness that I'm tucking underneath here that I'm kind of hiding. And those holes are actually for, uh, for zip tie holes. So once these go in here, once the zip ties go inside, it's actually going to be supporting the wiring harness right below here. So there's also some holes at the side of the frame and I actually push those holes the rest of the way through and that's going to also carry additional wiring harnesses kind of going through the side through a channel. And now what I'm doing is I'm working on uh, the hole, the firewall hole. So these wires, these wires are going to go through this hole right here. Once I cut this square a little bit bigger, I'm going to use this same uh, Tesla weather stripping and make a small box around it. And after that box is made, I'll be pulling the remainder of the wiring harness uh, through the firewall. And that's going to allow me to have various accessories like, you know, starting the car, uh, headlights, turn signals, etc. So right now I'm just going to finish up this wiring. Uh, I'm going to start drilling small holes here uh, for the DC to DC converter and really start permanently mounting things here. Like this is going to be like a small mounting plate for that. And I'm also going to mount the, uh, the motor controller here as well just to fixate it, get it in position uh, so I could start planning the rest of this. So now that I got this hole drilled, I'm going to start the process of getting screws in there just to get that permanently mounted. Uh, I don't think I have to drill all the holes in this. I might just drill three because I don't want to get too close to the battery pack. But uh, this, this, uh, this DC to DC converter doesn't really require a whole hell of a lot to, uh, to get going. Cool. Okay, now that one's done, I'm actually going to start this one over here. This is the motor controller box, I believe. And uh, if you look, the, uh, the screw for that is actually kind of small. So what I'm going to start doing, I may just make that larger. I don't think it really matters that much. It's just plastic. But I'm going to make sure and secure both sides. There's two screws over there. And I'm actually just going to use the same size bit I've been using. Try to keep it uniform across the board. Okay, guys, let's get into the controller aspect of things. This is a Sevcon Gen 4. And what it actually does, it actually takes the, uh, the power from the battery and distributes it evenly through the motorcycle and also to the, um, the motor as well. So now this is interesting because there's actually in a heat sink below this, which I already separated. That's the controller and this is the aluminum heat sink. And this is kind of big and takes up a lot of space. Uh, I know it's very important to, to cooling the controller, but I'm actually not going to use this. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drill holes in this plate and this represents the mounting plate that's currently in the motorcycle. So what I want to do is I want to drill a hole on this side and a hole on this side. And I actually want to mount the controller to this panel. Now the problem with this is that there's a lot of overhang on the bottom side. There's overhang here and this controller is actually pretty heavy. So what I want to do was I want to cut a bracket on this side right here and hopefully make an extension for this controller, but I'm actually going to end up cutting it about right here. That's what you're going to see me weld uh, in the next video. Uh, I'm also going to drill a hole on this side, drill four holes in total, and I'm going to have to have this mounted to the, uh, the steel plate itself. Now the thing is, is that this is an aluminum cooling plate, so what I'm actually going to end up doing is I'm actually going to end up spacing this a little bit more as well. I'm going to get some longer threaded screws, and I'm going to space it up maybe like an inch or two, and that'll allow airflow to get underneath the controller as I'm driving a cool at the same time. Remember, this is designed to move a motorcycle, not a car that weighs two to three times more of the total weight. So this controller is definitely gonna get a workout. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure it's as cool as possible. Adding a spacer so it's not direct steel on steel would definitely make that a lot easier and keep the controller temperature lower.
What? What, sweetie? What? All right, now back to the rat rod itself. I'm gonna give you guys a really quick overview as to some of the things I've been doing in the background that I haven't shown on camera. But one thing for sure is I actually welded a tab right here for the battery. And what this tab is for is this in case the battery shifts or kind of wants to fall off this mounting plate, this tab is gonna stop it in place. Not only that, but I also have a mounting screw on this side so the battery is permanently screwed down here. I finished installing the DC to DC converter. This is not going anywhere. Motor controller is not going anywhere. That's secured really well. And if you look back here, um, the battery box is mounted on that side. So that's one, two, three points of contact. That doesn't slide off. And also, it's also mounted in the back down here as well. There's a screw going through this plate and going to the battery. So total, this battery is not going anywhere. I actually try to lift up the battery itself and actually started of taking the car with it. So this battery is very, very secure. Now these straps that you see here, these straps are just to hold the charger box in place. That's all that this holds. This channel's here so that this actually doesn't slide uh, up and down, but these are not going anywhere. These straps definitely have that charger in place. Uh, as I pull up on the charger, the entire battery wants to be picked up as well. But that's some of the things I've been doing so far. Another thing I've been doing also is um, uh, I've actually taken care of a lot of the wiring management. If you look at this here, um, that's one thing that I make sure I want to do. Uh, zip tying those in place, making this a lot sleeker. Uh, at some point I have to remove this kickstand because that's really no need for that. I have to just trick that magnet into place. Also, if you look here, I finished the welding. Well, not really finished, but I started the welding. I added these zip ties here to run some of the wiring underneath because this wiring is a lot simpler than it was before when it was on the actual motorcycle. So I welded this extension panel in place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld here a little bit more do some cleanup on the welds, that doesn't look very good at all, some popcorn welds. I'm gonna add the spacers to actually space the controller a little bit higher so airflow gets underneath. But this is the secondary tab I was referring to. That's welded in there, that is not going anywhere, hopefully. Um, but we're making some really good progress on this so far. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out this pedal situation once and for all. I'm hoping to figure out the pedals today. Uh, this is the brake pedal that I cut off uh, a while back and I'm hoping to cut this down to make this a lot better size, um, if you look here, this just this just never made any sense to me. I'm going to make a new brake pedal out of what I have right here. So I'm just gonna cut this down. I'm probably gonna cut it about right here or so. And then I'm gonna weld it to the side, kind of like this, to make its own brake pedal right there. Oopsie, <laughs> sorry about that. So what I had to do was I actually had to cut the middle as well and shorten it because what I didn't measure was the height for the steering column to the top of the actual pedal itself. So this was much higher and it was actually hitting the column and it wouldn't allow the brake to fully engage. So I cut that down about maybe an inch or so 
and I welded it in the middle and that's how it really sturdy. So it's starting to rain a little bit, so I actually wanted to bring this inside to focus on one of the pet peeves that I had with this whole rat rod build, and it's the fact that these seats stick up about six inches over the top of the car. I actually don't want to be able to see the seat backs at all, so I'm actually gonna end up cutting about seven inches or so off the back of the seats because it looks a lot more slick having a nice little integrated bench as opposed to something that, you know, that looks like it blatantly came out of a Dodge Caravan. So I'm actually gonna plan on cutting this back a little bit. I'm gonna cut it about right here, all the way across. And then I'll bring it to a fabric shop, a fabric or upholstery shop, uh, to actually have it redone. I'm hoping for like a nice red leather or red vinyl to match the dashboard as well as the wheels themselves. So I'm gonna cut the back of this seat. Gross. Seats are primed and ready to get reupholstered and it's time to figure out how to get silly with the throttle. Stay tuned as we're nearing completion of this thing that may or may not catch fire in the next 20 minutes or so. I wanted to thank all of you for watching. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and the Patreons for more behind the scenes footage. Those links are below and I will see you guys soon.